perhaps I will have a little problem for you. How many people does it take to make two atoms? I'll tell you later. This is an experiment that has been done in the United States with a huge international team. What has been done is an experiment which lays the way open to making element 120, which so far has never been observed. And 120 would be really exciting because it begins the next row of the periodic table, a heavier element than has ever been made before. Professor, wouldn't 119 start the next row? Or? 119 would be the beginning of the next row but for reasons that I, as a simple chemist, don't understand, making even number elements is a bit easier than making odd number elements. Though it would hardly be described as easy making even even numbered ones. The story is that up till now, we've had a whole series of elements at the end of the periodic table, and all of these were made by taking a heavy element and cr accelerating into it a nucleus of the element or the isotope calcium-48. Calcium is element number 20. So if you wanted to make element 118 or Ganesson, you would take calcium, which is element number 20, californium, which is element 98, and you would accelerate the calcium and every so often they would fuse together. You can see it's quite a hard process. So you would get the combined nucleus with 20 plus 98 makes 118. The problem is that if you wanted to make element 120, you would need element 100, 20 plus 100 to make 120 and it's just not feasible to make enough of element 100 fermium to make a suitable target to do the experiment. This is really unfortunate because calcium 48 is a really good element to accelerate because calcium 48 has a large excess of neutrons, 20 protons 28 neutrons, which means when the things crash together, some of the neutrons can be lost and remove the excess energy so the element you've made doesn't fall to bits immediately as a result of the crash. So the big problem has been to try and use a heavier element. And if you go along the periodic table, you have vanadium, titanium and chromium as suitable bullets to fire at your target. I'm not sure why nobody's thought of using scandium, but nobody so far has successfully used these to make any super heavy element. And the problem is the probability of titanium, for example, fusing with one of these heavy nuclei is very, very much less than for calcium. So you need to do lots of calculations, first of all, to work out the suitable energy to fire the titanium at the target, because if you fire it not with enough energy, it will never fuse. If you fire it with too much energy, you will blow to bits whatever you form. So there's a sort of sweet spot of energy. And then you have to do a calculation of how you're going to detect the super heavy element that you form. So a big group in Berkeley in California decided to try an experiment with titanium to do what scientists call proof of concept to show their method works. And so what they decided to do was not straight away to make element 120, but to make a known element, element 116 Livermorium. Livermore is not very far from Berkeley, but there is rivalry between the labs. And 
to make Livermorium, which is 116, from titanium, which is number 22, you need element 94, which is plutonium. As your target. Yes. The actual way of making the target is to put a thin layer of plutonium onto a backing of titanium. That titanium is merely a support. It's nothing to do with what you're firing at. We've got some pictures of a very similar target that was used in Russia for making a Ganesson and some of these other elements on one of our videos. The isotope of titanium that they used as the bullet was titanium-50, which is a very rare isotope, but can be separated and was separated at a different lab, which supplied not absolutely pure titanium-50, but I think about 90% enriched. Titanium is a very high melting point element, so they had to design a special oven, which in their paper they described as the size of the end of one's small finger. In English, it is called little finger. In American, it's called pinky. It's not a very good size judge because it depends how big or how fat your fingers are. My fingers are quite small. But the idea of this oven is to go to a temperature above 1600 degrees centigrade to produce a stream of vapour of titanium. That vapour is then ionised to remove some of the electrons, quite a few, about a dozen of the electrons, and then it is accelerated in a cyclotron to very high speed and then fired at the target. In some of the descriptions, they say they fired six trillion atoms a second. Because of confusion between American and English, English, I'm not quite sure what a trillion is, but it's a very big number, and it's either a hundred or a thousand times more than a billion. So it's lots of atoms. They did this for a period of 22 days, and during that time, they saw two atoms of livermorium. So that, that means, in at least two cases, the bullet merged with the target for a yes. short period. And for most of the time, they either missed or they made something else or everything blew to pieces. So you can imagine if you have the target and all sorts of stuff flying out of the back, you have to separate what might be livermorium from everything else and by putting it through a magnetic field, you can separate things in terms of their mass. And because the livermorium will be much heavier than most of the other things, it's relatively simple to separate the mass. And then the atoms that you've separated goes into a solid target where it will sit and eventually decay. These super heavy elements tend to decay by emitting alpha particles which drop the atomic number two units at a time. So livermorium element 116 will go to fluorovium which is element 114 and that will then decay to copernitium which is element 112 and so on. And you can see on my tie, these decay sequences are fairly well known. This tie predates Livermorium, so it's not on it. And after 22 days, they made two atoms of Livermorium. Now, it has to be said that the paper that they have published has not yet been refereed by experts. But it has been placed on what is called an archive, so anybody, including me and Brady, can read it. The key thing is their method works. 
This is the first time that titanium has been used as a bullet to make super heavy elements. Now, the idea is to try and make in future element 120. And there are two difficulties. First of all, the probability of titanium fusing with californium, element 98, is lower than the chances of titanium fusing with plutonium. So you're going to have to use the equipment a lot longer, perhaps a whole year, to see one or perhaps two atoms. And of course, other people want to use this machine for equally exciting experiments, and you have to persuade them to back off. The other problem is that californium is very radioactive. You can see our video from Oak Ridge, where our guide described it as being a bit dosy. They're both californium. They're both californium solutions. This is a californium 251 mixture. The rest is californium 250 and 249. And therefore, the equipment in Berkeley will need to be modified for using this much more radioactive target. The key question that you're probably asking is, what is the point of making these super heavy elements, especially when you only find one or two atoms? And there are really two reasons. The first one is that they are a fantastically good test of the theories of what makes at atoms stable, what binds them together. The second reason is that it has been predicted that as you increase the number, the atomic number, some of these elements may start getting longer lived. We may reach what is called the island of stability and that some of these elements could be quite long lived. Now, you're never going to be able to make physical objects out of element 120 because you could never accumulate enough. But if it was longer lived, there are all sorts of experiments you could do to examine its chemistry. The question that always fascinates me is that if you go down the periodic table, do the elements all become much the same? Or will element 120 still be an alkaline earth like calcium, strontium and so on and show some of the characteristic properties of that group. So do the group properties continue to these super heavy elements? And with great luck, this question might be answered. There's a third reason, you get to name the element. Um, I don't get to name it. No. But whoever discovers it does. That's a good incentive. I'd love to name an element. Well, I think that... Um, I suppose I would quite like to name an element, but um, before you all suggest who it might na be named after, radium or whatever, you have to be dead, or usually have to be dead, before an element is named after you. And we don't want Brady to stop making videos. You promised us you'd answer the question, how many people does it take to make two atoms? Well, counting the authors of the paper, I made it 54. So that's really quite a lot of people. Hi hey everyone, you might have to be dead, unless you're Yuri Organessian of course, to have your name on the periodic table but you can be very much alive and have your name on our periodic table of patrons. These are people who make small to large contributions every month to help us make videos. We really appreciate you. Is there an element you'd like to have your name on? Go and have a look at the link in the video description. And while you're looking at all those links, there'll be plenty of other videos we've made about super heavy elements, visits to Germany, Russia, the United States, all sorts of amazing stuff, and you can get up close and see things you might never normally see. Machine with this side turn, we made all super heavy nucleus, PIL 180.